Hey y'all, and welcome to episode 14 of the Unseen Strands Podcast, a crochet and fiber arts related podcast where I, your host, Mo, am visually impaired and will be sharing with you strands of my life. I come to you from central Iowa where I live with my four boys, our two cats, and our dog. And you may hear Sam in the background because it's screen free time currently and he's decided that he needs to set up what he'll be doing in a half an hour when he gets games again and yeah so he can't wait <laughs> apparently so you may hear him but anyways I decided that I would come on here and share a little bit with you since I finished something else and it seems like the easiest time for me to record is when I've finished a big project, so I thought I'd go ahead and share that with you. So to start off, I finished my Poison Ivy socks. Yay! <laughs> These were the socks that I was making for my husband, and they're mainly for the summer romance cowl. Cal, sorry. <laughs> and I'm also using them for tea and tails as well as several other summer sock along things that are going on. I know there that I know there is one that is sport weight or thinner yarn that they'll be going into and there's several sock alongs like I think it's Little Wool and the Big Skein has is that the one with the sock school? Anyways, um, yeah, there's just several, several different sock cowl things going on. So. Anyways, so yes, these are my Poison Ivy socks. They are a men's, well, like shoe size 11, 12. My husband wears usually 11 and a half, so it's somewhere in there. Uh, they're made out of Leading Men Fiber Arts yarn in the color Poison Ivy, hence the name. And they are contrasted heel and toe in the color Fortune Teller. This is a pattern I've kind of designed for myself. What tokes? You're very loud. What do you want? Sam, do they need food? No, we have a ton. Do they need water? No, we have a ton. Are you sure? What do you need, Tokes? Sorry for our kitty disruption. What? What? What do you want? She when do you want it? <laughs> she wants her what back? Her life. She doesn't have a life. Yes, she does. What? Anyways, back to the socks. <laughs> uh... I use basically I did these socks in cuff down and they use your basic cuff where you single crochet in the back loops and I did these since it is a light fingering weight I did it for 68 stitches and then I found that about 13 rows of single crochet I might have to discover a different stitching method to use um, but 13 rows of th single crochet was about all I could do for length and still have it like comfortable to put on. So I don't know if I'm going to have to make a longer cuff for my husband because he would still like these to come up more on his foot. But yeah, so we're still playing around with that. But 13 is a lot better than the three that I did in his first first ones. Why do I get Asalate? It's not Asalate! It is too Asalate. It survives a lot, you dumb Um, sorry, Sam was giving me his stuffed Minecraft. I believe it's supposed to be an ocelot, isn't it? Yes. It's an ocelot, so what I call it. Right now? <laughs> we, we weren't sure what it was in the beginning. We called it something in between an ocelot and a cat. And so we call it, sir, or I call it ocelotte. But. I call he doesn't like that name. <laughs> and Leo loved him when he was a baby. Leo used to drag around Asalate like it was his favorite toy. Shut up. It was so cute. Shut up. 
What? You weren't the one doing it. I don't care. Yeah, that that is Sir Sam who just turned eight. Yeah. I'm not eight. I'm twenty-two. Oh, you took a big jump there. And what's that make me? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't think I had you when I was what forty nine. Is that is that twenty two seventy one math? Well, you're well, you're two hundred and seventy one now. I I don't think there's anyone that's two hundred and seventy one. The people who died are. Oh, okay. Better dead. Mm-hmm. Toast. Bad kitty. Kitty, go to the dumpster. Anyways, yeah, so the socks, um, the contrast toe I had to do in the poison ivy color for a lot longer on the toe than I was originally going to because a 20 gram mini is not long enough <laughs> to do a full toe apparently because I started it and kind of counted out stitches for a few rows and figured out that I think what I counted out I got to about it starts at 68 stitches and I needed to degrade decrease it to but I end up decreasing it to Sam um, 16 17 18 19 20 so 40 I decreased it down to and um, I think I wrote that wrong in my project notes. <laughs> um, but so since I needed to decrease that, try to do the math for that and I was going to run short so I went back and worked those few rows of the poison ivy color and then yeah. So I ended up I probably got could have gotten an, another couple rounds. The contrast color is in the color fortune teller. Did I say that? Do you remember if I said that, Sam? No. <laughs> but yeah, and so the if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Oh, well, thanks. So yeah, the contrast color is fortune tellers. That is also a leading men fiber arts color. It is. It's a gray, isn't it? You probably don't even know what I'm talking know. about. <laughs> it's not right in front of me. <laughs> uh, and Daddy's socks. Um, no, gonna no, they're not you. over here. I thought they were up here. I must have left them on the couch. <sighs> or on the chair. But, yeah, so they're done. My husband has already said that they fit better than the other pair that I made him. But most of that is because the two yarns were a different base, a different kind of yarn, and that kind of changed, I guess, how the fit was <laughs> and this time I'm using the same base and the same yarn so we had a lot closer closer match there with our yarn so I think that helped he said it wasn't noticeable after he wore them for a while but when he first put them on they felt different at least in the heel because the heel is really tight and this time he says that it fits a lot better he doesn't notice it like he did with the other one and anyways sorry <laughs> this is turning a lot longer than I meant it to be but that is my Poison Ivy socks, or my Summer Romance Cal finished object. Yay! So I'll be able to finish that, or get those. Actually, I already did get them posted. Um, I've got company coming for this weekend, and so I really wanted to push these since I didn't realize that the Summer Romance Cal ended, I think they said August 13th. And yeah. I needed to get these done so I could get them posted because chances are I won't have another chance to before my company leaves. So I wanted to get those done and everything so that I could have at least my entry into the finished object thread. And I think that's all on the Summer Romance Cal slash Poison Ivy socks. So on to our works in progress. I am currently working on. This is Jeremy's. Um, I guess you can just call this a chevron blanket. It's just your basic ripple or wave stitch. I'm doing a five stitch up and then your three in the center and then five down and skip two. I know there are a few different ways to do the chevron, but 
I'm just doing that. It's just double crochet. It's pretty mindless and basic, which is why I'm doing it now while talking to you. Because <laughs> it's pretty easy. Uh, I took the picture when I had finished the third cake, so it was a lot easier to transport and lay out for a photo. <laughs> And hopefully I will have this one done by the end of Stash Dash because I really, really, really need the yardage. Yeah, my Stash Dash is very hurting for yardage at the moment. I think, I don't remember what I last posted on there. I want to say it was only like 3,000 something, maybe? I don't think I was up to 5,000. I do not have my Jasmine top in there which will give me, uh, that won't even be a thousand, that'll probably give me another 700 meters or so. And I've got a couple other small things that do need to get entered into that total, but yeah, I really, I think I estimated this out to be like 2000 meters and I really, really could use that as well as like my spinning projects and things, which I need to like get off the bobbins and things so that I can actually count those as meterage or yardage as well. Their totals are calculated, calculated, geez, I can talk, are calculated in meters because they go by kilometers, but you know, everyone pretty much puts it in as yardage and then has the lovely tools configure it for us into meters. Like I use my Mr. Google <laughs> to turn everything into my meters for me. But yeah, so I'm working on Jeremy's. I have seven cakes, and this is the Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel in the color um, Snow Cone Stand. And yeah, I have seven cakes. I have a story about Jer or about Jeremy's. I have a story about Sam's cakes that I will get to in the little bit more of the chatter section. But that is what I am currently working on. Oh, and I'm working this with an eye hook, just your basic boring project, I guess. But it's looking nice, I guess. I, I almost think it looks more like something that my grandma would have made with the sh sharp color changes, because Sam, would you call this an orange? Is it orange and like a navy and a blue and a tan? Not or is it green? I can't tell colors. But <laughs> I think it looks more kind of 70s-ish, which I think is just funny. Um, or do you have to pick a side? Sam, enough. <coughs> but, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> that is my current whip. I am also working... Sam, enough. Go downstairs if you don't want to listen to me. Uh, I am also currently working on my project for the Land of Silk, which is in the Yarn to Table podcast, and that is for the FiberQuest Cal, which is the thing I've been doing all year long. Sorry, I'm being hit in the back of the head with a box. <laughs> but it is currently the Land of Silk. That does end at the end of this month. And I didn't actually start my project till this month, but I'm pretty sure that I can whip through it and what we have for the remainder of this month. Um, I'm just making a scarf. It is a baby llama and silk blend. I got this yarn, I believe it is by Juniper Moon Farms, something like that. Um, I got this yarn back in April during our Mid-Iowa Shop Hop and that was in my Veda videos, and now everyone's doing vloggers, so that makes me think of it. <laughs> but yeah, I got that skein back then because, as I keep mentioning, <laughs> my husband's co worker is infatuated with llamas, and so we had gotten this for me to make him something. And I'm just going with a scarf because it is llama and silk. I'm not sure if silk would retain its shape or anything. I know llama, I assume, is a lot like alpaca. And so it'll kind of lose its shape and stretch a lot. And so I just kind of assumed that. So I didn't want to do anything that would need to have a more, I guess, shapely appearance or whatever. So I decided I was just going to go with a scarf because then I can go on and on forever and ever and it won't matter. 
I am calling this scarf my X's Between the Lines. And this actually uses the same kind of stitching pattern that I used in the hat that I designed for Wool Needle Hands podcast. They have their hat along that is going along all year. I forget what, or I guess I don't know what August's month is. But July was to design your own hat pattern. So this kind of used the same thing as I used in there. And... I guess I could show you that picture. That is also a finished object, but it's a very like small <laughs> finished object. So I just, I didn't focus on that as a finished object. And I didn't get a super fancy picture. That's what I will be making a hat for Jeremy to go with his rip beer sweater. I was just kind of playing around with the stitching pattern so that I could make something that would kind of go with his River Coast sweater. And then I realized that I named it wrong because I keep listening to all these knitting podcasts and I called it the Smooth Operator or I keep listening to all these podcasts about Smooth Operator knitting sock pattern. And so I called it my Operating the River Coast and it's not, I was using the Soul Soothing. I don't know why those two names Soul Soothing and Smooth Operator get stuck in my head and interchanged, but <laughs> so I need to go in and rename that as I named it Operating the Rubber Coats because I was trying to pay homage to both patterns that I used to kind of create it, and then I totally screwed up. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, back to my scarf. That is my uh, between the X's because I used the X stitch or cross double crochets and then just solid single crochets and rows in between it and so that's why I kind of call it my X's between the lines because there's X's between rows of single crochets but yeah I'm probably about halfway done with that I should have you weigh that Sam no no oh <laughs> probably about halfway done with that ball so it might not be the most male fashion forward scarf but it'll give him something and he never actually has to wear it he'll just be able to have it and that will be a Christmas be present to throw it in the garden. thanks Sam and that is going to be a Christmas present so the few groups that still have their Christmas and July alongs going on I will be able to enter that into that because I do hope to also have that done by the end of this month so that I can count it Again, four stash dash and at least one or two different groups have a Christmas in July along. I know one originally planned it to end in August and the other one extended it through August. But I know the proper pineapples ones, one did end at the end of August or at the end of July. So I did not get into that one, sad to say. But that will be hopefully done by the end of the month. And then my other work in progress is I started a chemo cap. This would be for the Cody Knits podcast. He is doing a, I guess, kind of chemo hat along. <laughs> he works for the oncology, is that the right word, unit over where he is. And it didn't sound like he was going to be picky on the fiber. And I ac actually gotten this yarn back when Hobby Lobby was doing their clearance. It is a Yarn Bee alpaca yarn. I don't remember the actual name of the yarn, but when I had originally bought it, Jeremy and I both thought it looked like red marled with black. And then we got it home and I actually looked at the name and it is like rosy something. <laughs> and it is definitely a pink. So we had originally picked it out to be something for Sam and yeah it's definitely pink so it doesn't work for my Sam it needs to be red red not pink <laughs> but I decided I would use that yarn for the chemo hat project so I am currently making the McKenley's I think springtime hat it came up when I was searching it's actually a child size hat and it has instructions on how to make it basically an adult size hat what I am doing is, I think you're supposed to use a G hook and I am using an I hook. It's common size I'm using right now. Oh, but my scarf is using a G hook. Um, but the hat is using an I hook and 
I'm going to do another round of the increase before I move on to the body or, you know, beanie part of the hat. So I've basically just gotten done at the top. I think I still had another row of increase to do, but I did this right before we left for our little uh, vacation this weekend. It was just a getaway to go see my parents and go pick up the boys from my dad's house because they were there all week. And we were celebrating Sam's eighth birthday with my side of the family, basically. Um, so I did this while I had everything else that I knew was going to be more mindless to work on in the car. <laughs> Which actually, this blanket that I'm working on for Jeremy, I had, they, my dad came up to pick up the boys uh, after their birthday, I had a combo birthday party. I think I mentioned this in my last podcast. So I pretty much worked on that while I had all my other stuff packed away and ready for the car. And... You may notice it is now screen time and Zane actually woke up. So now we have both Zane and Sam up and making noise for us. But uh, I just wanted to kind of try and wrap this up fairly quickly. Uh, yeah, I don't even remember what I was talking about, but I think we covered all the objects in progress and oh such God, and so <laughs> the only things that I have left to really talk about is our little tiny bit of acquisitions. I'm not really planning on adding very much during this month to my stash. I of course will have my Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club box coming and that is has been shipped so I should be receiving it any day. It shipped like last night so I'm going to guess tomorrow, maybe, what day is today? Tuesday? So, I should definitely have it by the weekend. So, you can look for the unboxing video sometime, probably this weekend. Well, maybe, because like I said, I have company. <laughs> so, maybe. Maybe we will get that. I'm not sure. Uh, and then my other stash enhancements. Um, my lovely yarn the story you know we had the sugar wheel cakes i think this was in one of the things that i didn't actually get posted for you uh i did get to participate in the hobby lobby clearance event and i originally only got four cakes of each color for the boys and i was like oh what is it 200 yards or 200 grams something i'm like 800 grams that that should make a decent size blanket and then I decided I was making it for the bed and you know twin size bed isn't a huge bed but 800 grams and this kind of not you know airy airy stitch <laughs> it doesn't isn't gonna go far enough so then I decided that I was going to need seven cakes to be on the safe side and yeah so we went around to the stores and there was no more Cherry Be Merry, which was Sam's colorway for the yarn. And we checked, we checked one, two, three, four different Hobby Lobbies that are in within an hour of here with no luck on finding that. We did find lots of Jeremy's yarn, like I said, the snow cone stand. But we couldn't find our Cherry Be Merry. So I ended up posting it on Ravelry in a Iowa group and mentioned that I was looking for it, especially mostly because I knew there was a ton of it in the college town, which is where I originally got it. And within two days, it had completely disappeared from there. So I mainly had posted it thinking that somebody in that town might have gotten more than they needed and I could buy it off of them. But probably a week or two later, I had actually gotten a response from someone who lived in the town that my mom lives in. And I actually had honestly not even thought of their Hobby Lobby existing because it's only been there for I think a little over a year. And so for the whole time I was growing up, it was Target. It was not Hobby Lobby. <laughs> and so I don't even think of it as a Hobby Lobby store. So. 
when I had got this message that they had it in stock at the Hobby Lobby in that town, I was like, Hobby Lobby? Oh, yeah, there's a Hobby Lobby there. <laughs> oh, so, so funny. And so I had asked them if they could grab three of the cakes for me, and then I would, you know, have, I would come up and get it. Of course, this was back in June, and I'm like, oh, well, the kids will be going. You know, we hope to get back to see my mom. Same, come here. Come here. Yeah, that, that does not belong out of the box. Where's the box? Where's the box? <laughs> Sam, can you help him find the box that this goes in? This one right here? Hopefully. Um. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Zane. That's not the right box, but thank you. That is a box. Um. <laughs> but... <sighs> Yeah, so we had, we were hoping to get up to the town my mom lives in sooner than we actually did. So I had this person get the yarn for me, and they've been holding on to it for a month and a half-ish. And so we finally got over there, and so I can finally say that I have all the balls that I will need for Sam's blanket and Jeremy's blanket which is super exciting. I am so thankful and Ravelry is such a great tool for that de-stash because I didn't have to pay shipping. I just had to pay her for the actual yarn and it was funny because her husband works at a museum thing there so she just had the yarn at their uh, checking counter and so I just like walk in. I know this is gonna sound strange but would you have a bag of yarn? <laughs> So that that was really funny, but yeah, I got it and I I did spend five dollars, which I think is technically I don't know if that was more than it actually cost, but that's all she said she spent on it, so that's what I gave to the guy to give to her husband to give to her. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure the kid at the counter wasn't her husband. Well, he was wasn't a kid. It was probably someone more at my age, and I know he went into the back and sounded like he was talking to somebody. So I assume that was her husband. But it was really nice that, you know, the little interwebs got me the yarn that I needed so I can have happy boys and not have to sacrifice and change my plans. So Jeremy and Sam will have matching blankets, and I have all my yarn now. So super happy. And we're good on that. And then the other stash enhancement also came from our trip back to see my mom and my dad. Uh, we went to their Walmart and their clearance had some really strange things in it. Like my husband got a mini Sphero, which is one of those little ball things you operate with your phone with an app. Um, he got that for like 15 bucks and they're usually like 50, I think is what he said. But he got one of those. Zane, out of Jeremy and Sam's room. Hi, baby. You want to sit with me? Uh, but he got one of those, and then they had a little loom. I mean, it's only a 10 inch. It's probably supposed to be like a bracelet or something loom. I don't know. I can't read the instruction book to really tell. But they had a little loom there. And so I decided it was $7, and I figured the ones I've seen, I saw some like on nitpicks, and those were uh, 20 bucks, 20 to 30 I think, depending on the size. So I'm like, you know, $7, I can play around with this. I can probably make something with it. I don't know exactly what, but... <laughs> so I've gotten that out, and I basically put some string on it just to kind of see if it could handle worsted weight yarn. I think it'll do okay. I'm not exactly sure what it's meant for, because it doesn't come with any actual materials other than just the loom itself, and like a comb and a needle, which I assume is to be the... Oh, what's the proper term for that? Uh, I can't think. But the little passer through thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it, it didn't come with a lot of stuff, but it came with enough to play with it. So we'll see. Maybe Sam will get interested in it and create something because that would be kind of fun. Um, with what? 
With the loom thing that I got. What loom? It's in your thing behind me. Because I threw it behind me to keep the babies from it. Ah. Uh, yeah, so I got that. And that is basically it for this little episode. The cake, it's not in the box. It's in the tub. The Cakewalk Cal is still going on and will be running till October 14th. I did actually get a new prize for that. I did get an order from Knit Picks and I have gotten one of their What's Yarn Talk this? bags. They're not a very big project bag, but I figured to get, you could probably fit a cake in it. That's the loom, honey. So I figure you can get a cake in it and so that will probably be that with a cake of yarn as a prize and we'll probably do a couple other prizes but for right now there is that and a few stitch markers I did actually order some others what I like or what is my favorite stitch marker to send along as prizes but I think I want to try and dress them up a little bit so we'll see if I ever get around to doing that or if it even works because they have a little smaller base than I was thinking for some reason so we'll see if my idea still works or not. Um, but other than that, for other administration things, uh, my Etsy shop is still on vacation mode. The kids shop is up and going because I screwed up and never actually put their shop on vacation. <laughs> so you can find the kids at moeskids.etsy.com as well as on Facebook. You can find me as Mo Cro Moe's Crochet or Hooked on Moe's on most platforms. And Samuel, do not interrupt me. You can find me on most platforms as either Moe's Crochet or Hooked on Moe's. I am Moe's Crochet on Instagram, which is probably where I am most physically active as social media. I'm probably most active on Ravelry, which is also Moe's Crochet. Uh, and I guess that's kind of it for this episode. I know I'm forgetting something, but it'll come to me later. <laughs> but anyways, guys, if you liked this episode, I would appreciate it if you would hook the like button and subscribe. Talk to you later, guys.